Hey up. How's it going everyone? Welcome to Rads, let's talk about Nottingham Forest. More specifically, transfers. Normally tends to be quite a dull subject when it comes to Forest, we've already broken our transfer record and it's only the start of July. But a busy start to the window, one that was kind of enforced due to these PSR rules that we had to heavily avoid bruising again, otherwise, well, it could have been another points deduction. Hopefully we've avoided that now, for all we know there's a loophole or something stupid because the rules are clearly not fit for purpose that's another subject but it looks as if we've done our bit we're going to get into all the dealings in this video i'm going to be doing these video every week throughout the transfer window there's going to be plenty more to come i'm sure so stay tuned by liking and subscribing to rad the channel has got a fresh lick of paint not literally i wouldn't paint a youtube channel not physically possible either but i wouldn't do that Move on, David. It's besides the point. We're back, and I really want to make the channel even better this season, always improving it, bringing you the best content possible. So let's get into it. 35 million is what we have paid for Elliot Anderson. We have broken our transfer record, so that is no longer in the hands of Ibrahim Sangara. Will this mean that Sangara is suddenly a world class midfielder and the player that we thought we were getting? Probably not. But, you know, let's just hope but with the signing of anderson i don't think we need to sign any more midfielders unless we lose dominguez or sangara it wouldn't really make any sense to sign a midfielder now the anti ryan yates camp might say sell yates to bristol bristol rovers i was going to say bristol city but you know let's go even further down than that in fact no is they a non-league team in bristol send him to them because he's that bad of a footballer even though he's actually you know, kind of the heartbeat of the team. Always puts a good shift in. Um, yeah, just, just saying. 55 appearances for Newcastle. Anderson leaving his boil club. That's got to be very difficult for him. It does look like Newcastle didn't actually want to sell him. But for their own PSR issues, they were pretty much forced into having to sell him. Getting 35 million for ultimately quite an unproven player for them is unbelievable business. With us, it is a bit of a risk, that transfer fee, but I like the signing. I think it solves a lot of problems in terms of replacing Mangala, completely different sort of player, but it does fill that hole. More than anything, it gives us excellent support to Morgan Gibbs-White, and if need be, he can actually play on the left wing. So really good depth option when it comes to Anderson, and I think based off that fee, he cannot really be a depth option. We need to be seeing this guy regularly and I don't think that's impossible. I think he can get into this team. He played 26 times for Newcastle last year. He did have quite a long-term injury which is not a good thing because our record with injuries isn't exactly great but as a player I just think he's a really good option just what we need honestly and it does look like Forrest are trying to do this more this window trying to sign more players that are up-and-coming young talents rather than I'm not sure we're going to sign a few experienced heads but like you know, there's a d definite emphasis on trying to sign younger players. Of course, I mention it being as it's linked with this deal, we have sold Odyssey's Vashadimos to Newcastle United. Let's just take a moment to think about Newcastle and what the hell they've done wrong to deserve that. Yep, it didn't work out for Vashadimos at all. Very good backup option for them, I suppose. They've also signed John Ruddy in 2024 and they've got four goalkeepers not sure what they're doing there but that's their problem unsure what the fears for Rashid Demos I've heard it could even be 20 million I think that might be wrong but if it isn't wrong we are geniuses at getting fees for players including Moussa Nierkate now I like Nierkate I think he was a good servant to us never really had a consistent run because of injuries AFCON but last season when he did play, he was a bit inconsistent. He didn't really have any games where he really stood out. He had quite a few, you know, nothing games. And it's a shame, really. It kind of just ended up being a disappointing tenure for him in ways. I think there was a lot of hype about him. That first season, he had an injury that lasted pretty much all year. But last season, he just ended up being a backup option in the end. And it's, it's a shame. Um, but getting 20 million for him, I, I think it could even be more can't really argue you know as much as i liked near Carte, it's more useful to sell him when he's not going to be even a starting center back and you're getting that much money for him we need the money for psr uh, to stay in, in line with it so i like it in terms of it, you know having to sell him rather than murillo or gibbs white 
yeah, it does look like we've got over the line with that. Obviously, with the Orman Gala deal as well, we'll just touch on that. Obviously, pretty much gone anyway. That's a foregone conclusion. Beginning about 40 million combined for Mangala and Nier Karte. He's outstanding business. They're both great players, especially Mangala. I think that's a big loss for us, but hopefully Anderson and what we've got can make up for that. But considering what we paid for both of them, I don't know exactly what the fee was for either of them, but we've made a significant profit on both of them. To sell them two seasons later for this much combined is is, is incredible business. We can have a go at us for our dealings with, with transfers, for sure. We've made mistakes, but we know how to get a profit. <laughs> we really do. Forrest have also announced on the day that this video is uploaded that we have sold Brandon Aguilera on a permanent deal to Rio Ave. This is also a club owned by Evangelos Martinakis. Is this to do with PSR? I'm not sure. I did not see this coming, maybe alone, in fact definitely alone, but permanently selling Aguilera, I'm generally quite baffled whether he had a future with us or not, a really good young exciting player, I'm actually very disappointed that we've let him go. Now since I last did one of these transfer videos, we've made two more signings as well and overall three signings in general, Eric De Silva, Morena I already mentioned him previously, but he is now a done deal. I'm not sure what's going to happen with him. Is he going to actually come in and play or is he going to be a youth prospect? Is he going to get loaned out? I think he might actually play because I think we need him, honestly. We've got, obviously, Hudson Doyle and Alanga. Moreno offers that depth on the wing. He's only 18 years of age. Not really played much senior football at all. Right winger option, I think he can play as like a false nine as well. So I think, honestly, it's a good very good future prospect depth option, won the World Cup with Germany's youth team. It's a bit of a low risk one really, because a very small fee, he's only young. If it doesn't work out, it's nothing too much to be concerned about. I also should mention that he can actually play as a wing back or even a full back on the right side. So maybe we might see him being a backup to Nico Williams, for example. I still think another full back is needed, but that is actually very good that he could also cover that area of the pitch too. And we made another signing as well. He's not actually going to be at the club for at least a year. Will he ever play for us? Not so sure. Marco Stamsic, I mentioned him previously as well. Signed from Red Star Belgrade for not too big of a fee, I think about 5 million. 22 years of age, signed a five year deal. We do tend to do this a lot. We sign players and then they end up going to Olympiacos, Biancon, Car Car Carvalho. Omar Richards, it's happened so many times. Cafu, Bukalakis, honestly, it's happened so many times, hasn't it? So, not sure about that side of things, but only 22, five-year deal, does suggest he might actually end up playing for Forest. While we're on the subject of incomings, let's just look at two rumours that I've also seen. There's others, but I'm only going to look at ones that I think are particularly, you know, of interest. And particularly likely in terms of Miguel. Of course, Carlos Miguel, we've been speaking about him for a while, goalkeeper. Need to replace Vasha Dimos now, obviously. I'm not sure what's going to happen with the goalkeeper situation. Like, I think keeping Turner as a backup would be pretty good so that we don't have to sign another keeper. But Turner's surely not want, going to want to be a third choice. And then his cell's going to be dropped and is, is Miguel going to come in? Like, I'm not sure he's going to be number one. Probably won't even cost that much, Miguel, of course. But it does look like this deal is pretty close to happening. And yeah, that's another one that's on the radar. I'll keep you obviously updated next week. Hopefully by then it's happened. And one more that I will mention. This is just a rumour that may not even happen. Jordan James from Birmingham City being linked with us. Only 19 years of age. Midfielder. Obviously got relegated to League One last year. But he's a Welsh international. He's only 19. Played over 100 times for Birmingham. Played pretty much every game last season for them. Scored eight goals. He was a bright spark in a very poor side. I think it would be a very good future signing. I don't think he'd come in and play all that much, especially with the options we've got in midfield. I mean, he'd probably come in and be a Czech Uarte, just a rotation player that doesn't even really play that much. Or will we sign him and loan him back to Birmingham? We'll just loan him out again, I don't know. But that's being rumoured. It looked a bit more concrete than some of the other ones I've seen that I'm not going to include, but I wouldn't be against it. Um, I just don't think it's completely needed. And obviously, I've got to mention Murillo, obviously attracting plenty of interest. I'm sure it's going to continue throughout the window. I just hope we can keep him by some miracle, give him a new deal. Um, I think, honestly, for his sake, and I'm not even being biased, let's just forget I'm wearing a Forest hat and I'm a Forest fan. I just think for his own benefit, 
staying at Forest another year wouldn't be a bad thing at all. Another year to develop. He's not even played a complete season in the Premier League yet. Last season, it he came in in the October, so he's not even had that whole year technically. So going to someone like Chelsea or Juventus who are being linked with him, he will go there and hardly play. Surely, I mean, I know he's very, very good, and we would get a huge fee for him. Forest won about seventy million apparently, which I can't believe I'm saying that about a Forest player. I think he could definitely end up leaving, um, but. I just think for his sake, it would be better if he stayed at Forest another year at the very least, then leave. I think that would be better for him. It's inevitable that he's going to leave at some point. He is very special. Very special. There's other things going on, but I don't really like to mention stuff that I don't think has really got a chance of happening. But uh, that was my roundup of everything that's been going on. I'll be doing these weekly. If you have enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe to Rads, and yes, I'll see you soon, everyone. Up the Rads.